The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and thank you for joining us for this latest Cardinine News webinar. My name is Owen Rudy, the editor of CDN. Today we're going to focus on the latest version of Alias by Autodesk, V2013, which was launched back in April. We'll be looking at its most recent improvements and new features. This webinar will serve as an update training for this recent version, and we're jo joined by Niels Kremser, uh, an industry servicing specialist. He'll walk us through the new version in detail and show us its new tools and functions. These will be across five broad themes. Theme one is user surface, user adoption. Theme two, import and export EDF. Nice Theme, uh, theme three, modeling functionality. Theme four, small bug fixing. Theme five, IT integration into PDM systems. Nils has more than 20 years experience in the automotive and software industry with a key focus on surfacing. He's worked for Alias Autodesk since 1998 and supports automotive OEMs and suppliers in Europe. He's also a certified Alias instructor and has trained designers and modelers of Volkswagen, Audi, Porsche, Seat, Skoda, BMW, Daimler, Ford, EDAG, Bertrand, Johnson Controls, Opel, Renault, the list goes on. This session will last around 45 minutes, after which we'll wrap up with a dedicated question and answer sessions. Please do get ready to, answer, to ask your questions throughout the webinar by typing them into the box on the right lower hand side of your screen. That's the box on the bottom right of your screen. If you experience any technical issues during this session, please type them into the Q&A box and our team will do their best to sort these out for you. We hope, we hope that you'll find the session stimulating and informative. Now I'll hand over it to Nils uh, to begin his presentation. Thank you. Yes, um, thank you, Owen. Uh, it's me, Nils. Uh, thanks. Um, welcome to everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, um, thanks for the introduction. So you have already heard about the, the topics here. Um, I always like to show not just feature by feature, but also an overview of the topics and direction that um, Alias is going. Um, and I'd like to repeat this as well and um, show some or tell you some more details. So topic number one, user interface, user adoption is um, very very important for Autodesk, uh, especially with the with the alias um, software, because uh, you might have heard that we we play a much bigger role not only in concept modeling but also in class A modeling surfacing, and we have more and more users uh, migrating from other software like ISMSurf or Katia V5. So I will show you the examples, the progresses we did in this uh, version. Topic number two, um, that's not. Not also, it's not interesting for everybody. For for one, or for some of you, might this might be the big bang of this uh, version 2013 because for the first time, uh, we have import and export uh, capabilities um, native to ISMSurf's native format EDF. So the industry approached us and asked for, um, especially this converter. Uh, one big German uh, OEM um, started already using Alias for Class A. And you can imagine uh, this will not happen overnight, and we will not replace ISM immediately. But uh, we will um, the the manufacturer will work with both system for for a long time. And so import and export um, is very important to them. Topic number three: modeling functionality. That's the the normal regular improvements uh, you would you would expect from uh, from a new version. And I will tell you a little bit about the topic number four and five. They're smaller, not so much important, but I, nevertheless, I'd like to mention them because uh, topic number four was a special program from Autodesk. Um, JDI stands for Just Do It. It's really um, interesting. I found it interesting. Uh, if you're an alias user or long-term user, you know these little small bugs that are not super important and never get it or will make it to the top of the priority list to be fixed. They never get fixed and uh, are just annoying. And we made an additional initiative, JDI, to fix these bugs uh, bugs in uh, in advance in addition to it to the normal bug fixing. Uh, topic number five is the IT integration into PDM system. Again, there was one major OEM who did this uh, during the last year, 
and the good news here for you is uh, in terms um, of PDM system, if you plan to do this, there's a lot of work uh, was done behind the scenes, invisible, we worked with the IT um, compartments and um, yeah, if you plan to do it, it's done already, more or less. So I jump now directly into, um, into the functions, uh, there's one command uh, about, about licensing, uh, you know that alias comes with three levels, three packages, there's a small alias design rather for uh, industrial design and then we have the mid package, it's alias surface, the package uh, you can do class A surfacing with as well as um, the largest, uh, most expensive alias automotive version and we decided, or Autodesk decided to uh, include Maya into an alias automotive license. So with version 2013 for the first time uh, you can start either alias automotive or Maya. Uh, why did we do this? Um, you know, you might know that Maya is, uh, has a powerful polygonal uh, and subdivision modeling system inbuilt and uh, especially in German here's many companies uh, during the last two or three years um, enlarged their um, poly modeling um, seeds a lot uh, just to speed up the, the first concept design phase and it turned out that Maya works very good with Alice together, has some uh, advantages over other packages like um, direct connect formats like an Alias you can import export directly Cartier V5 parts for example in, uh, in case you want to load in a package uh, and uh, you can in Alias you can um, work with Maya files, Maya can write alias um, Maya format and so on. So this is, uh, in case you have alias automotive on your desk, you have Maya now too. So now uh, I start with the chapter user interface user adoption. I told you already that especially user adoption, a migration from other systems is, uh, has a high priority for us and I'm happy to announce that um, uh, we added to the initial workflow window another button, so when you start alias for the very first time, you got this welcome screen and you have a, a button for default general usage, so modeling usage, you have the paint button, um, in terms you want to start with the sketching um, UI and now we have in the middle here you see a modeling class A surfacing UI, uh, if you choose this you will be starting with a dedicated reduced shelf set for class A modelers. Uh, please check it out even if you're not a uh, class A modeler but interested in serious modeling, um, you can check it out um, and it will uh, change your shelf marking menus and, and the UI. Um, if you ticket this, um, if you switch it on, don't show again, you will never see this again, so it's usually only you see it once. Um, in the same context, we have um, here, we have created a color schemes for different systems. Um, some people find it funny but actually every now and then in my trainings um, some people coming from ISIM or from Cartier ask uh, please can I have my, my dark blue background rather than the light gray of alias. I'm used to it, um, it's, it's better, easier for me and why not, why should they have this. Uh, to make this easier now you can uh, easily choose one of the color schemes you find in the menu, windows, preferences, interface, user colors and it's uh, ready to be used. Um, now we come to something more important, it's about the uh, uh, window and screen management. So we made uh, big, big efforts here and uh, I think there's, there's a lot of progress here. If you, if you look at the screen, um, you see on the right side um, a window toolbox, in this case a square control box um, and you see it's much smaller than the, the other one uh, beside, that's the, the one of version 2012 and before and we just compressed the windows and we were asked to do so by customers because they said you have, you have so many, you have uh, empty spaces, please, um, I want to see my model, not so many windows, so can you, can you do this please and uh, we did so um, and this is uh, about all the surfacing tools and option windows. I put a sentence here in, in blue color at the bottom which is uh, for me very nice and very uh, important um, and you see that all the windows, um, the size and the states are remembered now if you reopen them. 
Um, if you're working with hotkeys like, like me, uh, you can open and reopen, or close and reopen the windows and will pop out on the, on the same um, location on the screen, which helps a lot. Um, the next step is to show you the window management and for this I will switch live to the alias system. Um, by the way, you see a car here. Maybe I should wait a second. Yeah, you see a car. It's a Volkswagen Touareg. Uh, we have the permission of Volkswagen um, to use this car and we used it for, the, for our launch tour to introduce a new version. So I used it. I will use it here as well. All the, the most examples um, I got from this car. But actually to show you the windows, we don't need this car. So I switch it off. And uh, I, will, I will show you what it's all about here. If you look at the right, you see the control panel. And um, you know that usually the control panel is really um, fixed. So it's, um, you cannot change it. You cannot make it smaller or put it on the left side um, in, in prior versions. And now you can. That means you can um, tear it off, you can move it around, you can snap it to the right. You see the snapping is now there. Uh, you can snap it to the top and so on. The same, it's the same window type now like for example the object lister. And this gives you a new possibilities here. So for example you could snap it to the right and if you move, I switched on the grid here, if you move you, you don't want to uh, overlap your view cube. So what to do here? Uh, what you can do is to um, compress and expand it here with this little arrow. I hope you can see this. If I click on this um, arrow, you see that's the direction that the window should be moving. And if I switch on, if I click on this little square here, I can switch on auto height. And this means if I enable this, um, I'm just hovering with the mouse um, over this, this bar and it will expand by itself. I do the same here on the, on the left side with the object lister and this would be a one, one of the new possibilities. So um, I'm working with my model which is not there at the moment but if I go with the mouse to the right my control panel opens and will close again at the same with the object lister. So this is a new possibility to save some space for people who I don't know maybe work on a laptop have just one maybe smaller monitor um, in case you have two monitors, big monitors, this might not be so interesting for you, but for many users are. Um, if you prefer to have it the old way, um, then you can switch off the auto height and uh, embed this control panel again. So there's one button you have to, uh, you have to know actually, it's uh, shift. If you click or press and keep shift and you move it to the right, then you see you can embed this window again. I will do the same with the object list on the left side. So I press it, press shift, move it to the left, and it's embedded. Yeah, there's one last thing you should know, um, and this is you can, uh, you can combine windows. For example, one combination that makes sense here would be I would like to see the object list and the category editor on the left side. So I open the layer category editor and it snaps as well to the, to the object lister window. And here you can see, um, yeah, they snap together. They're not connected and uh, um, they're not connected now, but I can do so. Again, if I move, I do the same and uh, keep the left shift or the shift um, button pressed and move it and you see now it's connected and parented. Nice word. You see this on the, on the color here on the object lister bar. It gets from light to dark gray and now I can move both windows. I can even embed both windows on the left side by pressing shift again. Um, so yeah, check it out. Um, I, will, I will keep it like it is now. Maybe the layer category window I tear off, but I, I keep the embedded mode for this webinar. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is, um, or tell you actually, this is um, quite important information I think, it's about consistency of workflows of, of usage of the software. Um, 
And this is something, again, that uh, some customers complained about um, in the past, especially for people who, who were new beginners in Alias. They said sometimes you have a button here, there's a name Go, sometimes the name is Confirm, but actually it's doing the same. So can you please make it more consistent? And, and they are right, actually. Um, it's, it's much easier to learn the software. Every workflow, every click order is consistent, and we put a lot of effort in this new version to make it consistent. One example here is the window layout. You see on the left side here all the tools that are affected, all the surfacing, surface creation tools. And on the right side, you see um, it's color coded. You see here the, the structure of the windows. The example here is symmetric fillet, but is, like I said, it's for all the tools the same. On top, you find the two specific controls. Then um, you will see the explicit control options always. Uh, flow control, that means um, you deal the edges. Uh, surface structure, if you keep it strictly to Bezier or if you allow NURBS, you can control this here. And the control options, continuity check, and so on. And so on. So it's all the same um, logical structure now. We did the same for the continuity type um, titles for the names. So the, in red color, you see all the new names uh, for position that will be always G0 position uh, tangency, G1 tangent, and for curvature, G2 curvature. Um, for fillets, we, we name it G1 circular to indicate it's really a, a circular shape. Um, and the last one is um, for the construction history, the auto recalculation, we call it now auto update, um, easier to understand. So we did quite a, quite a lot of work in this, um, in this UI area. The last example here, which I'd like to show you, is uh, are the, the layer categories. It's, um, you know, layer categories are for grouping layers, logically. And uh, on top, again, you see half transparent the old window layer category editor. Um, for example, here, this example, um, if you look at the category grill, um, here you see just, you just see that there are three layers in this category, but you don't see which ones. In the new, in the new window, you see everything. You can expand, um, compress. You can even drag and drop now with the middle mouse button. Um, layers, you have the same colors, like yellow color for the current layer and selected uh, blue color for the selected layers in case you have more than one selected. Okay, there's one uh, little thing I want to point out and that's the, uh, the light control of the diagnostic shading. Again, I have a little, little example here to show you this. It's nothing too fancy, but um, I think quite important. So, people ask for this. I will switch off the grid. And uh, you will see that the diagnostic shading is not embedded anymore in the control panel. Again, we made it much more flexible. We put it out. So you have to drag it um, from the menu or you use um, hotkeys like, like me. Um, and I open this window here. And if I switch on the shading, I will change the color here to a light gray so you can hopefully see it. Um, put it a bit up. And you see that by default, I will change the highlight size a little bit. Yeah, I think you see by default the light is connected to the camera or to your head or your eyes if you want. Um, always. That, that's a good default, I think, uh, because always where you're looking at, there's always light, no, no dark areas, but sometimes uh, you might want to change the light but not the camera. This wasn't possible before here at this shading mode. So I will um, toggle model here and let's see, I want to have the light to the, to the left side. Here you see on the, um, and here I want to really point, you see here link light to camera and if you um, switch this off, you see two sliders here, new sliders, um, light azimuth and light elevation. And here it's a very easy, not too sophisticated um, control of the, um, of the light. So if you link it again, it's like, uh, like before the default again. So in case you need it, remember the link light to camera button.
The other um, improvement here is um, that you can um, drag shaders from the diagnostic shading um, panel to your shelf. I will do so. I use um, the icon number 8 here. It's called user defined texture and you may know that we have um, several map types here already like showroom, photo horizon, diffuse and I will just as an example um, switch on the showroom which has a pretty pretty sharp horizon and the other one should be diffuse which is yeah very diffuse and now you can easily switch from one to another and you have you have your presets on the on the shelf and you don't need that window anymore or not so often anymore. Okay, little thing um, but again please make use of it. Now we enter the modeling chapter. I guess that's uh, the most um, interesting for you if you're an alias modeler or any modeler here. And we start um, with isomserve EDF file import export. Again, I don't expect everybody to uh, to be excited about this, but I can tell you for some companies this is uh, really vital and uh, exciting. Um, if you're working in a department together with the ISOMSERF colleagues and alias on the same project, you can easily import and export exchange data actually. So um, here we to, to explain some details or some more details and explain what we can do. I have two screenshots here with me. Uh, one is ISOMSERF um, and you see from ISOMSERF and you see all the data entities that are supported. Uh, because if you think about it, if you, if you say what, what should a converter do? What should, should a converter be able to translate? It's actually anything. You want to have the geometry of course. What is geometry? It's not only surfaces. Um, it's, it's curves. It's, um, it's supporting geometry like vectors, points, um, plane and so, planes and so on. Um, and you see here the geometry types. Um, it's German, I'm sorry about that, but uh, I, I guess you can, you can see the different types uh, anyway. So we have raw data here, an alias that would be polylines coming from sections. Uh, you have scans, very important, uh, from, a, from a scanner, an alias we call that mesh. Uh, you have all the different lines, uh, points, lines, circle, ellipses, and so on. You have the different mathematical representation like uh, Vizier, um, V-spline, NURBS, um, and you have, of course, uh, surfaces. Not always uh, natural surface, but also um, trimmed surfaces. Um, and actually, this is uh, this is a, a greater or the greatest. Um, challenge for the developers because if you trim surfaces you have to deal with uh, you have to deal with um, tolerances with trim curves and so on. Okay, um, the next slide will show you the same data set in alias and you see everything is correctly translated like raw data scan and all the types uh, I named before. Uh, much more important and I will highlight this here on the left side you see it's the object list and you have the structure of the file. Of course if you um, even export or export and re-import your data from a different system you don't want to use, uh, lose your structure and here you can see even if it's German <laughs> you can see points, you can see curves, um, you see layers and you see even groups. So how did we do this? Um, if you you know isomserf, um, then you know that isomserf is not using, or isomserf users don't have layers um, available. So they organize their file typically with other entities like lists or parts. And uh, we thought about the mapping that makes most sense here from isom to alias and uh, vice versa. And we decided to make a mapping, um, to integrate a mapping of isomserve parts to alias layers and vice versa. Um, and the other way around, in, in isom you don't have groups like an alias, but you have atoms and the molecules. And um, as an option you have um, the possibility to make to have a mapping from alias groups to these molecules. And here the screenshot shows you how to do this. If you are on the menu, file open, 
um, you have to find uh, the EDF options and here you can switch the button on import molecules as groups. The same is true for safe, um, you can export groups as molecules. Here's one comment at the bottom, uh, which is quite important I think, uh, especially if you plan to use this um, EDF import export in your daily work. Uh, we have already one service pack, number one, uh, ready for download and I strongly recommend you to install this, to download and install this. Um, Alias 2013 is um, available since end of March 2012 already and the service pack I think came in July so um, you should you should download this and here's the, the website you find this uh, it's autodesk.com slash support you have to pull this over install it's easy it's not too big um, should take more than a couple of minutes okay to summarize this you see here a screenshot and actually this is uh, kind of an anecdote when we asked Volkswagen if you can uh, present data and have the permission to do this, uh, they didn't give us the data in Alice Wire or in Cartier uh, or IGES, but in EDF. So this, this was really a tough test, uh, but we succeeded. So the whole car uh, went without problem into Alice, and here you see the original structure. Um, so not only geometry, you uh, keep the structure, and um, yeah, this is uh, interesting as well. It, it, in terms, you have errors you want to see, you want to know which surfaces are affected and you have of course a log file, so a little text file where you see which surfaces or entity types are not correctly uh, transferred. Okay, um, the next big um, topic here, or it's a tool actually, but it's one of the major, two major points here, um, is the new profile tool. Um, we got some uh, requests from, from OEMs, they said, yeah, I'd like to start with Alice in class A, but please give us ISOM EDF uh, import-export and give us a class A capable profile tool. Um, if you think about it, we, we really didn't have such a tool before, at least not in this, with this accuracy you need for class A, and there are some other uh, important things I will talk about. Uh, in Alice you have rail, okay, you have extrude, um, but profile, you need some more options and features I will show you. So I will, um, I have an example as well here for the profile tool, and let me load it in. Here we have a very um, easy setup, you have a, a couple of um, a couple of profile curves, yeah, I click on it and you see usually these curves are consist of many curves, it's not just one or two or three, actually in this uh, example with little fillets and so on, it's, it's 21 curves um, here and it might be more than one curve, actually three here for the part, this is a typical um, setup I would say for profile. And um, if I try to build this with a rail tool, it's quite interesting I think, um, it looks like you can box select several curves, but it, if you click on the path, you see no, it's 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 really only using one of these curves. It's not what we want here, so I will undo this. By the way, we have uh, undo now uh, in rail and square. In case you didn't didn't know, <laughs> this is new too. Um, so I will do the same with the new profile tool. It's um, and I will explain a little bit more. Um, the profile orientation option here we have. Okay, so you find the tool usually in the surface um, creation button and you have three profile orientations, parallel radial, that's pretty much the same like in rail, but we have one new option surface normal. I want to talk about this one but if I, I start with parallel. If, you, if it comes to selection, and you see we can easily drag a box, we can deselect with the right mouse button, uh, we can reselect and then accept. And the same is true for the, for the path type, we have chain selection option in the tool, so it's um, no matter how many curves here, as long as they're tangent uh, continuous, you 
one click is enough. And if you look at the orientation here, I will show, uh, I will have a look from the side here, and you see um, in parallel mode, I will uh, invoke the history here with the query edit. So edit the history, then you see we built the profile in parallel mode. That means all the sections are parallel actually to the original um, profile curve uh, plane. If I change that, it's easy to change that with the history to radial, then I guess you know what happens. Then it will keep the angle uh, between the rail and the profile curves. So if this is uh, like here approximately 90, degree, 90 degrees, it will be uh, 90 degrees everywhere. Uh, but the real interesting, the real news here is um, if I show you the third options and therefore I will undo our profile and switch on switch on a side window because this is a typical example building a, a profile along the side window of a car, or an A pillar or whatever, or some rubber profiles. So we have three players here actually. Uh, we have a uh, profile curves now, we have the path and we have the surface. Um, and uh, here are two possibilities. First, the rail would be curved on surfaces and I will uh, show you the quality of the curve and surface. You know, curve and surface has, has good and bad uh, properties. One of the good things is it's, it's always within the surface, no deviation, zero, uh, which is good. Um, the not so good thing is uh, it has usually its nerves, it has segments. But I will show you anyway how it works because this is, uh, this is, uh, this is a case that could happen in the in reality. So I click again here, accept, and now I click on the curve and surface uh, and I change the profile orientation to surface normal and I will build the profile here. And you see it's uh, taking into account um, the surface normal of the side window which is good but you see uh, as well that we here we have uh, nerves, so spans which is not not allowed for class A you can say. So that's why I will um, jump in and undo this. And instead of curve and surfaces here, I will delete these. I'm using free and uh, free Bezier curves, so in good quality. So this is the difference. Even it's the same shape, the parameterization is different here. And I'm using the same option, profile, surface normal. Click on the profile curves and on the Bezier curves. And now I have to click three times and this is important because the Bezier curve has nothing to do with the window other than the curve and surface. I, I cannot I not know the surface normal. So I have to click on the surface and then the pro profile will, will, will be built. And now we have a clean, very good quality um, profile here. If you look at it, Match parameterization, usually this is um, on by default. What does it mean? It just means that uh, if, you have a, if you have some parameterization on your curve, like here for example, you have a degree 2 curve and here you have a degree 3 curve, single span, so busy quality, um, then you have the same parameter uh, on, this, on the resulting profile curves. Yeah, you see it here. And this is uh, what, what's really the news here. Um, you can build the things. I will show the same example on the car, on the Touareg. And uh, here you find again our little example. And I will build. By the way, you see that um, here we have the original profiles um, from Volkswagen, so we can compare afterwards. And I use the profile again. Uh, we really try to, if you build the profile, to make it as easy as possible to be used, uh, not doing, making it too complex. Um, so we're quite proud that we have only three options here that are hopefully easy to understand. So try it out. It shouldn't be too complicated. Um, again, I click on the profile curves on the path, and the third player here is the side window. And please uh, take into consideration that we have here, um, even if it takes uh, two or three seconds, we have 21 by 3, so 63 surfaces, surfaces being built. 
and I want to have a look exactly on this portion here. If I um, switch on the original profile, here you see it's exactly the same, um, the same shape. So it's exact. And if I jump into the history, here you see the yellow curve. You can still see the, the path curve here, and it's touching this um, properly. If I changed the profile orientation to radial, um, you see it's updating, but it's not what we want because here we are touching the rail, yes, but we don't um, take the surface normal of the side window into consideration. So I switch back to surface normal here. That's what we want to have. Okay, there's one important thing um, you have to know um, about the profile tool. Yes, the surface normal option is new. And you have two possibilities. Either you have the rail uh, as a curve and surface, then one click is enough, or you have it as three curves plus surface, then you have to click twice for the rail and surface. So this is phase one only of the new profile tool. So we, we plan this uh, over more releases than one, so two at least. So um, stay tuned for, for more options on profile in uh, ALIS 2014. Uh, what else do we have? We have a skin tool, new skin tool, and I'd like to show you again a little example, which hopefully makes sense to you. Um, actually, this happened to me when I was working uh, at, uh, at the company lately. Uh, I was the modeler, there was the designer, and he said, here we see a steering wheel. He said, um, wait a minute, can, you, can we, can we um, examine the section here again? Can you, can you make a negative radius? I just want to see how it looks like. And I said, of course I can. Um, and I did an undo here and used the new skin tool, which you see here on the right side. Um, and it has, you see it at the bottom of the, of the option when you have to chain selection. That's, that's very useful because no matter how many curves or patches here are, you just click twice and you have a new surface here being built. Auto update should be on. Yeah, I will, uh, I will assign the same shader here. Okay, and uh, again I jump in and change, the, change the, the shape of the history and what I want to draw your attention to is that the first section is proportional crown and here you see you can easily um, have a negative um, kind of a fillet or straight or positive. So this is, this is rather for concept phase um, for designers like this usually very much so you can play very easy with this shape here. That's a proportional, uh, a proportional crown option, sorry. Uh, if you're not 100% happy with, uh, with the patch layout here, like me, um, there's one option that will be very interesting for you, and that's here, the modify range. Let me highlight this for you. Uh, I think it's, it's really important. So if you look here, you have the modify range um, section. And this is not only for the skin tool, we, it, it's there and, and surface fillet, uh, for example, a panel gap, so this is quite useful. What does it do? It gives you handles, the manipulator, and the good thing it snaps to the edges of the neighbor surfaces, and you can, uh, very easy, you can create your own patch layout or correct your own patch layout um, and have only um, partial um, surface building here. Okay, there's another um, use of skin actually, and I really like this um, um, example, and I hope it's interesting for you. Actually, I was told uh, from a customer, and he showed me, uh, and he told me this is actually like a dream, like a dream come true to him. Um, let me check. Okay, here we have a, if you if you about to build a hood or a roof of a car, usually you have the same setup. You have a um, you have a middle section which is usually really important to the designer. And I will use the section and I'm building. I will use fit curve to build a curve here. And let's say this curve is very important and the surface has to touch this middle section. This is a very typical setup here. And Yes, maybe I want to have here degree three. I can do this with the fit curve and have a bit, bit better deviation than 0.5 here. Yeah, that should do. Um, 
and maybe I want to make it a bit longer, so I use my marking menu here for um, extend and merge. Don't need the history here. And, um, whoops. Now we have three curves here, and what you want to do when you build a hood is you want to connect, have these connected, and it would be super cool if it's connected with history, so you can play with the curves, and um, your you sh uh, your surface would follow, and this is exactly what you can do with the new skin tool. So I click here twice, not to the section, but to the fit curve curve, and again here as well. What we have here is a surface. You have explicit control, so if you like to have more um, controls, your control points, that's easy. Um, you can do so. Uh, and the good thing here is that you really can play with the with the points. Let me use, um, for instance, our the normal movement of a CV, and with higher mouse sensitivity. And then you see if I move this, the surface would update. Um, you can undo everything, but it, the the surface is exactly following this and touching this little section. Okay. That's all about the new skin tool. So you have um, some some examples for concept uh, kind of work with the skin tool, but the last one is uh, proper surfacing. So even if you if you compare the option box, the left side again is the old one. Um, let's have a look at the green section here. The surface to green, and you see, you see immediately that uh, before the options were quite limited. Surface degrees only one and three. Not a, not a lot of choice here. Now you have in the new box, you have all the controls you need, complete explicit control. So it's class A capable, you have flow control, you have Bezier uh, forcing options here, you have continuity check, chain select, and so on. Um, so just a modern up-to-date tool now. Um, the next one is the draft tool. And we had a major update of draft. Uh, in the last version, actually, but we did some refinements I'd like to show it to you. And draft is a very, uh, very important um, tool. You see here on the car, usually you have a lot of, um, you have a lot of um, things, technical surfaces here, like you see here um, on this. Okay. So I had some artifacts here. Okay, and you see this green long surface is a draft, and you see that that um, it's connected to many small surfaces, and I bet you don't want to want to select them all by hand. So again, new options, modern options like chain selection is very important here. So I will jump into this draft and explain some new things here. And uh, one new thing is the uh, the kind of manipulator. Uh, which is even better than before. If, you, if you're just hovering with your mouse over the arrow, you see immediately how long it is. So the length, you can see it in the, in the window as well, of course. But uh, we think it's good if you, if, you can, um, um, if you can do as many things as possible in your model without uh, jumping back and forth, model, window, model, window, but we want to do it really interactive. Yeah? You can just drag on this draft, but as long as this is uh, indicated yellow, you can even type like 10 um, or 5, you can type a value and it will follow. The same is now possible for the angle. So if I hovering about the, uh, over the, this little circle, it gets yellow and I can drag and change the angle. Um, I can key in an exact value like 30 or 90. Uh, and I can flip in case you, you catch a wrong direction, you can flip here as well. So all in all, I think it's a, it's a pretty good manipulator now. We do have uh, the measuring, the checking, the diagnosis inbuilt. You see it here on the, on the green line, position, indicating that it's with, within our positional tolerances. Um, and we have one new button here, and again, I, I would like to highlight this in case it's not easy to see here. It's called inter-surface continuity. Um, so what we see right now is the continuity check. We see the green piece, yeah, positional, yes, no error here, but what about um, the tangent um, 
continuity between these flanges or drafts and I can switch this on and uh, have a look at the, at the whole shape and here you see indeed we have here one out of tolerance portion um, 0.25 uh, degrees and then you might be spending some work on this and you can imagine if you had this uh, you might be overlooking and, and not seeing this little um, error here. Yeah, that's all about draft. Um, you see a little summary and by the way here you see in the middle shift click, use please shift click to add and remove these manipulators um, for creating variable drafts, variable in, uh, in length and or angle. Um, now we come to some uh, some minor things, but uh, nevertheless, I think it's important for the trim tool. Um, trim is is one of the essential tools. Of course, you need it very often, all the time, almost. And we made it faster and quicker here. Uh, Okay, here we see the front of a car and you can imagine here the air intake you see in red color. I want to uh, work on this and switch off the, the body here and you can imagine for instance building this air intake. Um, you use this, this surface to cut the air intake um, surfaces here and maybe we have a design change and we have a new surface here and then we we would need to cut it again in a, in a proper, in a proper uh, way. So I switch off shading and usually this is a two-step workflow. Yeah, usually you would intersect first and then you use trim. So two t would be using two tools and I will be opening uh, the trim tool. Here I have it on my shelf um, already. trim and you know that we have the 3D trimming option that should be on and um, in 2012 we integrated the project command already in trim to be faster and more efficient here and now we integrated the intersect option. So you can have uh, like, like two icons of, of trim which I would recommend one for project, one for intersect you, so you don't have to change the options all the time um, and then you can do this. Yeah, you click here, you click here, and you click your reason to, uh, I want to keep that, and the same here. Yeah, click again, again here, keep regions, that's it. And you can even box select here, like uh, we enabled last version. So I use a box selection to select more than one surface, intersect with this, and even for the regions to keep, I can have a little box um, just clicking once in terms of uh, twice, clicking twice. Uh, by the way, the same is true for trim divide. Um, in case there are any, any isomsurf users, there's a little bit different terminology here um, and isomsurf users usually um, say facing or faces here, we call that trim and uh, um, the isom um, the isom trim means an alias trim convert and now I will use trim convert uh, that means I create new natural surfaces and we have the same options here like in the trim command I switch on 3D trimming, intersect and switch on my surface instead of two workflows or two steps now I can here create my trim convert and I decide here keep to keep original or not. So I have to hurry a little bit. Um, I'm afraid it will be uh, still five or six minutes. Hope it's interesting for you and stimulating. Um, by the way, you see on the left side a uh, little thing, but nevertheless important. Uh, again, we were asked to do this. Uh, the color coding for the for the trim tool indicators we added here for divide a yellow color. Uh, before it was blue like in the keep and there was some misunderstanding so this is a little uh, improvement as well. Align, very important and again I have one example for you here. Mm -hmm. 
By the way, I uh, will not cover everything in 2013. I'm afraid I would need another half an hour. There, there are more um, tiny things. I really um, concentrated on the most important. Yeah, I hope that's that's important. That's good for you. That's uh, makes sense to you. So here, um, what I did here, it's about the the tank, uh, the fuel tank cap. Uh, so this is the portion of the car with the um, yeah, maybe I switch it on here, the rear uh, wheel, and I would like to build this um, cap, and I'm using, I'm projecting for the shape um, some curves here, I have already projected it and already aligned, and here I would like to adjust the shape a little bit, so um, if I remove the color, you see that it's green, it has history, so that means for me I can use Cree Edit um, to jump in, and change uh, the shape, and I'm using this little um, align arrows here. And now I would like to to jump into the other connection. And uh, before I had to leave the tool and pick nothing, and then create it again. So two clicks to go here, and then I can use these arrows. But I want to go back, and now we have this little um, other align activate other align, and now it's very easy to jump from the left connection um, to the right connection and adjust this um, as, 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 as good as you want to, right? Uh, this is a tiny thing, but uh, useful, I think. Um, and here at the bottom of my slide, you can see the second uh, improvement. Blending options are now remembered. Um, actually, now you can have many instances of a line and drag it to your shelf with different settings. Uh, they will be remembered now. Before, that was not the case, and the people asked us to do this. Um, and we did. Now um, we come to the end almost uh, slowly. There's the panel gap um, tool, and I um, very often I, I notice that panel gap is not known by everybody. So if you have Alice Surface or Alice Automotive, you should have the panel gap tool for creating easily shut lines and uh, things like this here. If you want to have a, a cap for the for the fuel intake. Um, you can use it, um, and it's much. It's, it can be very time um, reducing here. So I hope my little example will encourage you to to use this tool more. And we did some refinements here in, in 2013. So th it's that that fuel I built it already. I like to um, to explain something here. And you see, this is. Really, you you even see you even see the curve here, and you see it's still history. It's green, so I could actually um, change the things here. But if you look at this, and you see we created this tool. Whoops, we created this tool in a way that it builds um, from this curve in one direction. I will I will jump in and and show you the history here of this file. Um, and many people just get overwhelmed of this um, large option box, but actually um, it's, it's very logically structured. First you see here really uh, the input curve, the projected curve, and the, the, the panel is being built from to one side, and uh, we were asked if we can change this and make this a center line rather than uh, one-sided, and this is new here. Again, I will highlight this. Uh, this is new here. This is new in 2013 center line. I will be using this in a second. The other one is here for the radius. Uh, we now um, support G2 as well. Before it was limited to G1 continuity. So I changed it to center line and update the whole thing. And it will take just, I don't know, eight or 10 seconds to build the whole panel. And you will see in a second that uh, the input curve is now centered. Or it's situated in the middle, so the panel will be, be built to the other direction. Yeah, it takes a second. I think uh, um, I have to build it again because I can explain that. Um, we, we have the vector options for each side, and this should be Y direction here, and it was on Z, so Y direction. So we're projecting directly from the side of the car. And actually, if you look at the structure, you have your gap size. Um, I should highlight this. 
Yeah, you see now it's in the middle here because we have the option center line and uh, you can change all these things, the gap size itself, you have a primary radius, a secondary radius uh, and optional you have a flange from this radius and here's the projection direction. That's more or less all the things you need to know about the panel gap. Okay. Um, little summary, so new centerline option C2 um, availability and you have the range modification, I forgot. Um, can be, even if you, if you have, I, I'm not claiming that this tool will work on any situation, fully automatic, 100% perfect, but even if you have uh, let's say 70 or 80 percent being built of your of your shut lines automatically. It saves so much time. So please um, remember this tool and, and check it out and, and use it if if you need to build shut lines. Um, they are not only uh, modeling creation tools but also evaluation tools. So we have a one tool. Um, that we reworked a lot, that's the parting line tool, pretty important for class A, but I'm sure also in, uh, in design modeling sometimes you will need it. So we have now positive and negative draft angle display, you have vector options now, I will highlight this as well, so here are the vector options. Um, you have display options, shade surface now directly in the tool, um, I will show you this in the next slide you see um, red and blue indicating it's it's um, it has a good parting line or not uh, it comes out of the tool or not and you can change and find the vector interactively now which is pretty nice on the right side you see some uh, issues being fixed that we had before um, little explanation here you see on the on the top sometimes in some situations and angles um, we had some problems with the display quality of these parting lines and the only way to overcome was to, um, to control it and have a much finer display um, tessellation tolerance and then we used the, the global tolerance and, and slowed down the whole system and now we changed it to be a local tolerance. Now we can easily have a good display quality and keep the, the model in a light and good performance. Okay, almost at the end, there's one uh, last, I think, uh, command here. It's about uh, data management. Very brief and very short, two slides. Just, um, this is for those of you who, who wish to have a um, better project management, managing your data. I know that the, the big um, auto companies have usually have already a, a large, uh, major PDM system. But sometimes uh, in the design of department you, you're not connected to this and you want to have a, an easy small data man management system. Autodesk um, offers a solution that's called Vault and actually I'm telling you this because in 2013 for the first time we have a, uh, we have a connection between Vault and Alias. So if you have Vault running and Alias running you see directly in the Alias menu, you see here um, the entry vault server, you could log in and then you could use and check in and check out your files from that vault system. And this is not only about alias files, you see it here um, on the right side, files can be um, alias but also cut files like AutoCAD and Ventura of course, there are um, Autodesk main systems, you have Max. 3D Studio Max. Um, unfortunately not Showcase and, and Maya uh, now, but I am expecting to, to have this in the future as well. And Microsoft uh, Office files, it means um, if you have Excel sheets or PowerPoint presentations, you can connect to your uh, project. You can search, you can have metadata, you have a little preview, uh, but if you don't like the user interface, you can um, work directly from alias. That's, that's a good thing. Okay, almost at the end, GDI bug fixing, I promised you um, to show at the end the list of little, small but uh, annoying bugs that we fixed in addition to the, to the regular bug fixing and I don't want to read you everything, maybe just the, the first three, um, tiny things like construction planes are, not sh are now shelfable with their typical options or number three is trim convert didn't work with the selection of the interior of the surface. Yeah, these kinds of bugs get fixed and I don't know, maybe you see a 
favorite bug here fixed. Um, I'm at the end with my little presentation. Needed some more minutes. I hope that's okay for you, and I'm uh, I'm open uh, to answer your questions now. Neil, thank you very much. Yeah, we uh, we have a few questions now from the audience. The first one yeah. is um, in Alias version 2013. Are we able to use uh, embossing and debossing, uh, such as textures uh, on bottles, for example? Yeah, embossing. Is that something that's possible in version 2013, embossing and debossing? Um, I'm not 100% sure, to be honest. I had to have a look, but um, I th there used to be a command uh, called beveling or bevel. I think it's still there. So I'm happy to, to come back to the, to the person who asked the question and answer this a uh, bit more in detail after the webinar. Okay, great. We'll pass on the details. Uh, another question we have is, um, is .edf import and export, is that packaged into Alias Automotive or is it also available in Alias Surface? Yeah, that's a very good question actually. Um, at the moment, or when Alias 2013 came out, it was available, and actually until today it's available only for uh, Alias Automotive, not for Alias Surface, but uh, our customers approach us and we uh, we are in discussion at the moment internally, and I cannot promise anything, but it looks uh, very good that we that Autodesk will open this and, and um, make it available for Alias Surface as well, because we are we are aware that um, especially for suppliers, um, this is an obstacle, and uh, yeah, it's a it's a it's a matter of cost as well, and of course we want to we want to have our customers um, using these features. Um, yeah, so it looks quite good, but I cannot officially announce anything today. Okay, that sounds promising. Um, when you use the trim tool, does the intersect and trim tool leave a projected curve on the uncut surface? Um, it's like it's like if you would trim it uh, in two steps. So if you untrim the surface, yes, you would have to curve on surface. But uh, if you just trim, you will not. You will, as a result, you have to trim the surface. There's no like additional curve on surface. Um, I hope I made myself clear. So nothing has changed. Um, the result is the same as if you would have a two-step workflow. Just one step. It's just um, quicker. That's all. Okay. Um, in your presentation, you mentioned that uh, Maya can save wire. Uh, is that correct? And do I need a plugin for this? Um, yes, that's correct. That's correct. Um, in the past, you needed a plugin. Um, again, I, I'm not 100% sure. I don't think you need a. Maybe you need to switch it on, but you don't need to load anything or download anything. So it's in the Maya system. I'm not 100% sure if the, you know, if the if it's enabled by default, or if you have to go once in the Maya plugin uh, manager. It's similar like the Alias plugin manager. Just tick it on, so it's there, ready to be used. Okay. Um, and do you know if? Uh, a separate license for the item import and export is necessary? No. Um, so it comes just with, uh, with automotive. It's there. You don't, uh, you, it's, it's not part of Autodesk Direct Connect, which you could, uh, could license separately. So it's not licensed separately. It comes with automotive and that's it. And hope, hopefully with Alice Surface in the future and that's it. Great. Okay, a couple more questions. I think we've got time. Um, the user interface of Alias is still pretty cool with the marking menu and all these customized shells. However, it is looking a bit old. Um, will there be a major change in the UI in the UI coming someday? Um, yeah, that's an interesting question uh, because uh, we have actually almost like two kinds of customers here. We have uh, newcomers, um, all from other system or beginners, they say, mm, "Yeah, it's cool, but um, yeah, you know, 
you could you could offer some something more modern or more cooler. Um, um, on the other side, we have we have a, a vast majority of of um, day-to-day -day users, um, modelers who use alias for productive for production work, and they on the other side would say. Uh, please don't <laughs> don't change anything. So we have here we are a little bit between the chairs here, and I would rather expect uh, small steps here, not a revolution, um, but rather an evolution. We will not. I don't think we will change radically and offer a complete new UI. Uh, I think uh, some some customers would kill us actually. <laughs> Okay, and uh, the new profile tool looks promising. What about um, profile touching a second curve or a certain point on a profile curves touching geometry? Yes, uh, we are aware this is this is only the first step um, for for complete profile tool. So, like I said, we. Uh, we will develop this uh, at least uh, with two releases. So 2013 is the, is the first of two um, or more, even more, to fine tune the profile tool. So these um, options um, you can expect for the future. Again, I cannot promise any detailed inform technical information, but we will offer much more in the next version. Okay. Um, are all the features that you demonstrated today in ALIS 2013 included in the student version? Hui, um, not sure. <laughs> I guess so. Um, as far as I know, but again, I, I had to make sure and um, to uh, um, to have a look in, the, in, our, in our sites and information papers. I think, uh, but I'm not 100% sure that the student will get um, the automotive version fully packaged with the with the uh, with the fully featured with all the tools, yes. Great. Um, now, uh, when we implement lamps for rendering images, you have to remember and play with shader properties. Will there ever be presets for car lighting, for example, xenon LEDs, etc., so that it's quicker to implement glowing surfaces for lighting? Mm. You know that Autodesk has for. Yeah, I would say high-end uh, uh, visualization has uh, has a tool called Showcase, Autodesk Showcase, and I I would not expect um, that these things will will be an alias. I, I'm not sure. I'm not a product manager. I'm not a member of the management here, um, but I see that the trend, uh, the direction would go that these things will um, will pop up in Showcase rather than than an alias. Okay, great. Uh, we have a question that I can answer actually, actually, which is when the next webinar will be. Um, <laughs> that is going to be on the 12th of September, the next uh, Autodesk webinar. Um, I think actually we're probably out of time for today. So, Neil, thank you very much. It's been fascinating. I'm sure everybody agrees with me. Um, and the webinar is going to be uploaded into our archives. Uh, so, any of your colleagues who haven't been able to access this live can, uh, can view this on the website. You need to do this by going to the Processes tab on the Car Design News homepage. So thank you, Nils. Thank you all. And see you, you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.